Hi everyone, welcome to the Surfers Navy Association 2023 National Symposium held just outside Washington DC. With me today is Rear Admiral Fred Pyle, Director of Surface Warfare. Admiral, good afternoon, thanks for your time meeting with us. You're welcome, Xavier. Good afternoon, great to be here. Can you please first uh, telling, our, telling us uh, the role of N96? Absolutely, so as the uh, Director of Surface Warfare on the Chief of Naval Operations Staff, we serve in the Pentagon. I have a team of about 116 active duty uh, government civilians. And, uh, and what we do is we define the requirement for what our surface fleet needs to do. And then we work to uh, secure the investments and deliver that capability to the fleet uh, so we can, uh, we can do what the surface needs, Navy needs to do at sea. A major upcoming program for the US Navy is the DDGX, of course. What are some of the key drivers for the program and how is it important in your opinion that the program moves forward at, at base? Sure, so there's really there's really two key components of the DDGX that I would consider drivers. Um, first is Arleigh Burke class destroyer, very successful platform for nearly 40 years. Um, we have a swap C issue, space, weight, power, cooling. Uh, the margin for those that capability is no longer there. Um, we need DDGX to have a margin for that space, weight, power, and cooling. The warfighting imperative for DDGX gives us the opportunity to get to a larger missile launcher, um, increase our capacity of weapons, um, deliver long-range strike hypersonic weapons, and increase directed energy weapons that we have on board, as well as gross sensors such as SPY-6 to, uh, to pace the threat going into the next decade and beyond. The U.S. Navy is uh, currently doing a lot uh, with unmanned systems. In your opinion, what's the right mix between uh, crewed and uncrewed assets for the future of fleet? And uh, does that include uh, LUSV and MUSVs? Sure. So the, the, the unmanned work, the unmanned surface vessel work that we're doing is extremely exciting. One, one of the most exciting areas that we're working on in surface warfare right now. Um, four studies of, of to get to 355 SIPs. CNO has been very clear. Um, about 150 uh, unmanned ships to complement those 355 ships. We're still working through what that mix is. Uh, but we are moving out on the large unmanned surface vessel, uh, the Wakarian Adjunct Magazine, um, which will be uh, a great addition to the surface fleet as we uh, work distributed maritime operations. For medium unmanned surface vessels, um, there's a tremendous amount, of, tremendous amount of capability to employ C5 ISR and T. Um, so think um, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, collections capability that, uh, again, we can distribute that capability beyond our existing platforms to execute DMO. Admiral, what's the latest with the DDG-51 Flight 3 program? Thanks for asking. So Jack H. Lucas, DDG-125, uh, um, last month got underway for the first time on what we call Alpha Trials. Great underway, very proud of what that ship has accomplished, and the larger team team of teams that uh, made that possible. Uh, briefly, the ship was able to uh, operate at sea, the, uh, the propulsion plant, um, SPY was operated continuously, the Aegis weapon system, baseline 10, operated, and, uh, and we learned a ton from that first underway. We're now taking that data, collecting it, uh, determining what adjustments we need to make, and the ship will go back to sea in about a month and, uh, and continue that testing. Critical capability, Air and Missile Fence Command ship, uh, but we are keeping Jack on track and very excited about the platform. What about the frigates? What's the progress on the FFG-62 program? So the FFG-62 Constellation class, um, I had the privilege to go up to uh, Marinette, Wisconsin. Uh, I went in November. I don't recommend going that time of year. Um, but uh, I was able to see firsthand the construction of the FFG-62. We began construction in August of this year. Uh, we have set top level requirements for that ship and uh, uh, that ship will deliver in FY26. We are very excited about having a, uh, another sur small surface combatant, adding it to the inventory. Um, Aegis-like capability with SPY, Aegis Baseline 10, and uh, um, 32 VLS launchers, 16 naval strike missiles, tremendous amount of capability um, that we look forward to getting into the fleet. Last but not least, Admiral, LCS, uh, which future roles do you envision for the littoral combat ship? Yeah, so the littoral combat ship, the missions are twofold. First, for the Freedom class, we have the surface warfare package. 
which will be the, uh, the, the key task for uh, the Freedom class, monohull ship. And on the Independence class, we'll have 15 ships with a mine countermeasure mission package. Uh, so that is the program or record going forward. Uh, uh, both those programs doing well. Uh, the ship is deployed throughout our fleets. We recently had a success story with Sioux City, Freedom class deploying to 5th Fleet and 6th Fleet. And uh, the Independence class are operating in 7th and 3rd Fleet and, uh, and performing very well. So we're excited about the future of, the, uh, of, uh, of those two mission sets. Very well, Admiral. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Xavier. Really appreciate it.